police are investigating a case against the contravening of the Firearms Control Act after shots were fired during the funeral of Kebi Mapatswe at uh, the West Park Cemetery. There are reports that a pensioner was hit by a stray bullet uh, believed to have been one of the live rounds fired during that funeral. Our reporter Tsehwajo Moachi was covering that particular story for us on Sunday. Before we talk to Tseho, uh, let's first have a listen to what transpired on Sunday. All right, so let's uh, get into this now, Tejo. Uh, you were at that funeral on Sunday. The visuals we have just beamed, it's actually still inside the tent. In fact, I think it was just moments um, after the chairperson of the ANC, Gwede Mantashe's speech, had been disrupted by the people who came singing. And absolutely shocking that gunfire is heard whilst the funeral is ongoing it would seem that those shots would have continued being fired even at the grave site. Give us uh, your side of the story, what you saw that day. Oh, good morning, Koli. So indeed, that was the case um, at Kiwima Patsu's funeral, not just his funeral, but his memorial service as well, which was held at a church in Protea Glen. Mm -hmm. And you could hear that gunfire being fired. It was a bit um, more subtle on, during the memorial service on Thursday. However, um, you know, it got much more louder um, as it went throughout the days. Um, Sunday was quite a particularly interesting day. Um, when we arrived, it was peaceful. You know, the MKMBA members were marching and escorting him into that big marquee where we were situated. And that particular clip that you just played, as you mentioned, that was during the ANC chairperson, Gwede Mantashe's speech, where they walked in and interrupted that speech. That gunfire, fully that you hear actually happened much more earlier than that speech taking place. I mean, the service was supposed to start at 10 o'clock. It started just about five minutes after 10. But of course, Ndate Mapazo was already in the tent from about 9.30 that morning. However, the gunfire started about an hour later. Um, you could start then here. You started then hearing that gunfire and it happened throughout that funeral service. It started off as you could hear it just in the distance and this was a situation as well at the memorial service where you could hear it just at a distance. However, it started getting um, closer and louder and louder mm. as um, the program progressed. And interestingly enough, when we were doing our live crossing to our colleague Tembegile on Sunday, um, we were told to move from a certain position where we had situated ourselves. We were told to move because they were going to start with that gunfire, mainly because Kevin Mapazo was actually moving out of the tent. And they said that this is their way of honoring him as the former MKMBA leader. So that gunfire really was quite traumatizing. I mean, at, I remember so well, Koli, that at the cemetery, and I think this is something that may stay with me for quite some time, that um, there was someone that actually said that because they are bidding farewell to Kevin Mapad, so that they are actually allowed to shoot. And that's when, can I say, all hell actually broke loose because that's where you were able to hear clearly all that gunfire. I remember being situated very close to the actual grave um, site. Mm -hmm. And the minute I started seeing the guns popping up and, you know, them starting to aim, I then shifted myself away because besides the safety reasons 
I was also concerned about how loud a gunshot actually is. Mm. So you saw the AK-47s, the longer guns, and there were also those smaller ones, the 9 millimeters, probably, and I remember seeing a specific silver one, and it was extremely loud, and all you just saw was those bullets just flying out as they were allowed then to bid him farewell in you, their own way. You talk about them starting to aim, Teho. This is at the grave site. What was the instruction to you, reporters, or any person that was nearby? <laughs> Nothing. There was, there was no... Um, indication as to what you then need to do. Um, we were told specifically before he actually got to the gravesite, to the cemetery, we were told specifically that we are not allowed to show them um, or show them about to shoot. We were told not to do that. This was during our, just before our live crossing. Um, and at the gravesite, they said that they were then allowed to shoot. And um, as they started to aim, you know, you can see that they're aiming in a certain direction. It is supposed to go up, you know, the, 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 the gun, the, the bullets are then aimed in a certain direction so that they are not supposed to hurt anybody. Mm. But I remember where they were specifically situated, um, those guns immediately were raised and there was the brass band and that was actually not standing too far from them. But there was no indication or no warning um, from anybody to say, this is what you need to now do. Move away if you can, or if you don't like the sound, you know, find a spot where it's not too loud. Yeah. Um, and, and there was nothing that was really said to journalists to even those that were in attendance, that um, if you're not comfortable with where you are standing at the moment, then you actually should find a safer spot. Finally, Tsecho, talk to us about the state of mind of the people who were, who were firing these guns. And the, the reason I'm saying that is that this morning we are hearing reports that a pensioner, may have been struck by a stray bullet that would have come, allegedly come, from that uh, particular gunfire uh, by these people. Their state of mind, are you able to tell us, you know, how these people looked that day? Their, just their sense of self. Well, Koli, you know, during the speech by Minister Gwede Mantashe, um, most of them were very upset. Mm -hmm. And the main thing there was, of course, the disbandment of the MKMDA and what um, he had said about it. You know, he had said that the Temapads were understood that if there is a disagreement, um, that we sit down and that there are conversations that needed to be had. However, the MKMDA members were quite upset when that was said, and that is when we then saw them coming into the marquee tents. Um, and that was the state of mind during that particular time when Minister Mantashi was busy speaking. However, to, throughout the day, um, I remember a colleague of mine saying, it seems that they have been intoxicated, that they had a bit of alcohol, some of them. Um, but I cannot confirm that that is definitely the case. It is something that was an observation from some of our colleagues that were with us on the field on that day. However, um, you know, you could tell that there are people that understand the, what, what is happening because I did have a conversation with one of them at the cemetery just to ask what is the problem you know what happened during that speech by Minister Mantasha and you could understand you, you know I could tell that it is somebody that understood what was happening on the day so somebody in a very good frame of mind somebody that was there and present um, and not necessarily intoxicated or on any other form of substance and um, this is something that I did observe throughout the day most of them seemed to be very cognizant of the day, seemed to understand the, how big of a day it was, especially for the now disbanded MKMVA. And um, they also just, you know, they were quite disciplined, so to speak, until they were obviously given permission to do certain things and until they then disrupted um, Minister Mantashe's speech. But they were quite disciplined listening to the deputy president of the um, MKMVA and understanding that this is a very important moment mm. for this particular organization. So they did seem to be in a good frame of mind, most of them. Well, thank you very much for recounting uh, what you observed alongside fellow reporters on Sunday. And uh, let me tell you that um, it is, it's not uncommon for gunfire uh, to go off at funerals of uh, ANC people, particularly those that are uh, regarded as having been members of uh, the MK. However, is it legal? And that is the, going to be the question that we're going to put uh, to the police spokesperson, Vishnaidu, who is going to talk to us uh, in a moment. But uh, before we do that, let's just have a listen back. Let's watch back what actually transpired 
on Sunday.